Good morning, and it's a Wednesday, and today is the last, for today's lesson is the last part of our Space Law lesson, uh, lesson series. Now, we will be tackling the five treaties um, related to space, and it is shown here, I got this from the official website of the UN Organization for Space Activities, and the Outer Space Treaty was entered into force in October 10 or 1967. A year after that is the rescue agreement, then four years lapse, the liability convention, and then another four years is the registration convention. Then lastly, the moon agreement, which was entered into force eight years after the registration convention. Now, these five treaties will be tackled accordingly and in a very, very short ma um, Okay. The Space Treaty prohibits the placing of nuclear weapons in space. And actually, this is the, related to the Nuclear Ban Treaty. And it was during this time that space became the new battlefield for states like the US, USSR, and all other states that are storing or producing, manufacturing nuclear weapons. Now, it limits the use of moon and other celestial bodies to peaceful purposes only. This is to guarantee global peace and also to guarantee that there will be no World War III coming. Now, it, is all, uh, it also establishes that space shall be free for exploration and use by all nations. So it's like a common heritage of mankind, or res comunes. Now, no state may claim sovereignty of outer space or any celestial body, even if it, there is discovery and there can be no occupation. Now, rescue agreement, the second treaty, it's, uh, it states that any party who knows that a personnel of a spacecraft are in distress or in danger must notify the launching authority and the Secretary General of the United Nations. And state parties must provide all possible assistance to rescue the personnel of a spacecraft which landed within the state's territory. So there is an obligation on state uh, of, uh, for states to help whether the the accident is uh, or the distress or emergency or unintended landing is um, as manned by citizens of that state. So again, assistance must be provided to rescue the personnel of a spacecraft sp spacecraft who have landed within the state's territory. So they cannot just ignore that there's an accident or there's an emergency involved. So if, it, if the distress occurs beyond any state's party's territory, like in the Pacific Ocean, no one owns the Pacific Ocean. So any state party that is in a position to do so shall, if necessary, must extend such search and rescue operation. Let's say um, there's a spacecraft in distress near the Philippines, but it is beyond the territory of the Philippines and Philippines has knowledge of such. The Philippines must, must help or provide rescue, search and rescue operation. Now, what about the liability convention? The first is about, or the rescue agreement is more of imposing an obligation of non-participating states. Now, the liability convention states an obligation or establishes an obligation for participating states because the launching state must be responsible for all space objects that are launched and also that if it was even launched in its territory but not owned by that state, like it allowed its territory to be used for launching. It says, regardless of who launched the space object, object if it was launched from a state's territory or from a state's 
facility or if state cause the launch to happen then that state is fully liable for damages that may result from that space object in case of joint launching then there is joint and several liability on the damages caused by the launching what about the registration convention after rescue agreement after liability there's a need to register what are the contents of the registry this is these are the mo uh, most important the name of launching state so as to trace who is liable an appropriate designator of the space object or its registration number the date and territory or location of launching and the basic parameters this is more of a scientific thing the nodal period the inclination the apogee and the perigee so the closest orbit or the closest distance during orbit and the farthest distance uh, uh, during orbit from the earth and the general function of the space object like it's for research it's for just satellite so there's a need to provide this in the registry now what lastly the moon convention this is the closest satellite or the closest heavenly body uh, to the earth now jurisdiction of all celestial bodies according to the moon agreement should go oh, okay let me read it turns jurisdiction of all celestial bodies including the orbits around such bodies over to the participant countries so the participant countries are ha having are the ones having jurisdiction now it tried to this moon agreement tried to redefine the rights and responsibilities of citizens and government in the use and development of outer space and as we know that according to america's claim they've landed already um, the, uh, in the moon they've sent astronauts there now it reiterated the moon agreement re reiterated or emphasized that lunar resources are not subject to national appropriation by claim of sovereignty by means of use or occupation or by any other means so in public international law there is there are many ways of um, claiming sovereignty occupation use possession so the, these uh, the moon agreement excludes the application of this principle and to, uh, to repeat this is related to outer space treaty now in the future lesson we will tackle the philippine space act of 2019 and this was passed by the president rodrigo duterte now we have to stop the lesson because as i said it's the last part of the three-part lesson series now again we thank the team is um, grateful for the constant support of our followers and likers of our lex classroom facebook page and also our youtube account and we have more than 1500 subscribers and next uh, this week or friday we'll just um sorting things out with the team we will be launching a very special um, lesson which everyone could relate even um, even non-law students so we will be launching that very very quick lesson now we thank our website users and for sure the navigation there is better but again i want to remind you that our website is still a work in progress but still we thank thank those people who are there supporting us thank you thank you